Now, do we have a do we have a special guest to read the tote board, or 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 what's the deal here? Yeah. Nick, I believe do you want to read we do. The tote board? Uh, yeah. All right, give it to us, Bubba. One hundred and twenty thousand four hundred seventy-two dollars. Woo! Okay. One hundred twenty thousand four hundred seventy-two dollars going to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. And uh, we're here with Nick and uh, and his family hanging out on this afternoon. We really, hey Nick, we, you know, we really appreciate uh, you guys coming in today. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> here, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm wasted. You got a date tonight or something? Uh, it seems like your focus is elsewhere. I may. You, <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nick, how old are He's you? He's looking at Amy kind of long. Enough. You're 11 years old, so that puts you in what grade? Fifth. All right, so what do, you, uh, what, do you, uh, what do you like to do? What do you like to do for fun? Ride my bike. Ride your bike, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Do you, like, have a favorite subject in school? He's in fifth grade. They no. don't like school. They don't like school in fifth no. grade? I don't like school at all. You're like, <laughs> <laughs> you're like dude, I just go for recess. Yeah. That's it. For all the pretty girls. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Uh, and uh, we're here with Nick and uh, and his family. Why don't you introduce everybody? Who did you, who did who brought you? Who brought, who is everybody that brought you in here? My mom, Jennifer French. My dad, Jason French. Okay. And who's this? Uh, who's this, who's this big sister? cat over here? My little brother, Zach French. Zach, how are you? <laughs> Good? <laughs> <laughs> the only time I was about this left the microphone yeah. he came in. Yeah, I mean, it literally, like, as soon as as soon as soon uh, we open the door, like, w they both are, we want to talk on here. <laughs> <laughs> and that's fine. You guys can take over the show. I'll go home. Yeah. I've, had, I've had a super long day. We only need one Nick in here. Nick's not okay with it. Zach's totally fine with it. All right, so uh, I think Zach would probably be singing songs. <laughs> what is Nick? Is is Zach a singer? Are you a singer? Yeah. What about you? What What do you like to do in school? Uh, nothing. No, nothing. <laughs> oh, these 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 kids. <laughs> uh, and how old are you? Six. You're six years old, so that puts you in first grade. Kindergarten. You're a kindergarten. Okay. All right. All right. Very cool. Where are you from? Virginia. You're from Virginia, Illinois. Well, wonderful. Okay, well, uh, we're going to ask uh, Nick's parents some questions right now. Is that okay, Zach? Can they take your mic for a little bit? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so we've got Nick's parents here. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit um, about Nick and a little bit about your story. We know it's uh, Team French up in the building today. Yeah. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about Nick's story. Well, back in uh, December of 2009 uh, was when he was diagnosed, but prior to that he started getting headaches and um, not feeling well around October, November time frame. So from there we came to Memorial and they did some, some tests and checked around a few things and from there they sent us to OSF St. Francis in Peoria due to the fact that they didn't feel that they were able to treat him with their technology they had. Um, so from there we went to Peoria and they administered a couple things, some medications, um, sent us home and we treated it from there. Well, between then and December when he was diagnosed, it came back and got worse and the swelling got worse. So we went to Peoria uh, on around December, the first of December into November and they performed a procedure where they was going to do a little surgery on his skull to, to relieve some pressure and they did a biopsy and that's when they found out that what he had was cancerous in the cerebellum. They'd said it was malignant and I really didn't at the time understand because I was in kind of shock. Right. But then, you know, they, it was cancer and it was just like a, a kick in the gut, you know. Yes. Yeah. As a parent, your worst fear. Yeah. Um, you know, you, of anything that you hope and what you think that, and that you get told that it's, and it never goes away. I mean, right. you know, it's something that's always going to be stuck in your crawl a little bit. It's, yeah. it's just a, it's just a terrible feeling. So now 
Mom, what it, what was? <laughs> it's it's okay. He's not gonna hang up on anybody. Uh, Mom, what uh, what was your reaction? I, I mean, when your your husband's in the bathroom, <laughs> yeah. you know, he, he he's he's attending to other duties. Uh, what was? I mean, I, I assume you were the first one to get the news. Uh, I mean, I, do you remember how you felt? Do you remember what, um, what your reaction was? Yeah, yeah. Like he said, you know, that's that's not one of those um, feelings or uh, occasions that you're ever going to forget. Right. You're going to remember that forever. But, yeah, you, total shock, you know, to be told something like that. Everybody always thinks, this can't happen to me. Um, well, <laughs> it did happen to us. And so, yeah, it was just total shock. Um, and you just, you don't know what to do, you don't know what to say, you're just kind of like, you're shocked, you just stand there, yeah. staring at people, like, wow, what, what's going on? So, yeah, and of course fear, because you have no clue, you've just been told your child has cancer, and you know nothing else besides that, so, right. you know. Uh, from that point, they transported us to Memphis, St. Jude's, and, um, there is several forms of lodging or housing there. You start out in a, a small little uh, like a hotel environment that's called the Grizzly House, and it's donated by the Memphis Grizzlies. It's for short term, getting checked in, uh, routine checkups, or you know short visits for treatments, um, usually around a week or so. And then from there, we, we got sent to the, uh, the the Ronald McDonald House, which is for mid-sized stays of right. you know, anywhere from a month to two months. You know, that's the reason for the radiation, and, and then from there we got sent to uh, the Target House, which is for a longer-term stay, which is for families that are going to be there for a while. They try to give you the creature comforts of an apartment. They give the, you know, has a refrigerator, a little kitchenette, um, so, and then you're able to live as normal and stress-free as you would as if you were home. And through all this time, I, I mean, how much... Did you guys pay for treatments? Nothing. We for treatments and and all the all the back and forths. We really haven't had to pay. Uh, knock on wood, because I have good insurance and one of my insurance don't cover. St. Jude's takes care of. And even if I didn't have insurance, St. Jude's their motto is you know no child should be left behind with the parents' inability to pay. So they they take care of all the, the of the the f funding and bills and you know even for meals or even right gas to go back and forth because if we have to go there they'll reimburse you you know for your travel if you had to fly or whatever and that's what you know all the donations that are made offset the you know the cost of that so how is uh, I mean, how is Nick how is Nick doing now I mean, how, I mean he's stable he I mean he's looking at me like he wants to Punch me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> That's his normal look. Like. <laughs> I'm talking to him too, but no. Right as of right now, as far as they're concerned, he's stable. Um, we have to go back in three weeks for you know some more scans. Uh, and commonly, they'll have whenever they see something they're concerned about, they want to do a little more investigating on. They'll have you come back, you know, uh, oh, rather than your wait your three months. So we'll go back on the 15th of March, do some scans, you know, and then they'll give us some information, and then. Other than that, he's he's doing well. He's in school, um, doing good in school, and he's able he's getting his energy back. You know, the longer that he's out of treatment, the more energy he gets back, and the right. ability he is to, to you know maintain a certain level of fitness and, and appetite and so on and so forth. Now I know it's uh, it's kind of a difficult thing to think about, and uh, where do you guys think you would be? Where do you think Nick would be? Where do you think his brother would be? If it wasn't for St. Jude, well, I mean, it, it, we'd be in a lot harder place right now if it wasn't for St. Jude in, in, in any way, shape, or form. I mean, there are other areas, you know, where the treatments would be longer, and you know, the the, the protocols wouldn't be the same. You know, the, the the end result right now might not be the the same, and you know, possibly enough. I, you don't want, you don't like to think about it, but without them, he might not be here with us today because the severity of his type of cancer. Right. So, uh, you know, if it wasn't for them, we'd totally be in a different world right now. All right, Nick. Let's talk to you for a second. Is that cool? Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, what did you think about St. Jude? I think it's, 
an honor to be at St. Jude's. Yeah. What was your favorite part? Mm, I don't really have a favorite part. Everything's my favorite. Everything's your favorite? <laughs> Um, I know that when I went down there, my favorite part was the Target House, and specifically the <laughs> Sean White part, where you have the big, the, uh, you, where you have the all the skate, uh, snowboarding mm-hmm. merchandise, yeah. and you get to play with the uh, the iPad and the table. Like yeah. that was like that was like yeah. that was yeah. like in our tour. Like that was the first thing I went to. I was like, nope. All right, this is a great. I, I'm so happy to see that Oprah. Donated an entire wing, but <laughs> this this table is what I'm. The Amy Grant about. room yeah. didn't get you. <laughs> yeah. um, Can I just ask? I'm curious because we do talk about how they they do cover all of your expenses, and I went on a tour there for the first time this past fall. And one of the first places they took us to was K Cafe, and they were telling us about how they had these executive oh. chefs and oh, yeah. how you know they'll make patients whatever food they want. How is the food at St. Jude? Is it really as good as they told us? It's good. It's good. It's good. Yeah, you should have seen his eyes. <laughs> so how do you feel now, Nick? Feel awesome. strong? Yeah? Good. Good. I'm glad to hear it. What do you want to be when you grow up? I uh, hope to be a pop singer. A pop singer? Oh. Ooh, who's, your fa- who's your favorite artist? I don't know. All of them. All of them? Like Justin Bieber? Good answer. He's a girl. He's a girl. <laughs> You're probably more into that Kanye West. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. There you go. I've been playing Kanye all day just because when I'm on this side of the board, I get to do whatever I want. I like Lil Wayne, too. You like Lil Wayne, too? That's right. That's right. I got you. We're on the, we're on the same level here, buddy. All right. Final question. Why is it important for you to share your child's story, why is it important for people to donate to St. Jude? I think it's important um, to share Nick's story just because get, childhood cancer is not something I ever thought of before he was diagnosed. Right. You know, it's one of those things that, you know, I don't think many people are aware of unless they've known somebody, you know, close to them that, that has been through it. So. I, I'd love to share his story to help spread the word, you know, get other people to, to realize and learn what actually does happen, you know, to lots of kids out there. And you kind of like, you know, we, we talked before, um, if it wasn't for everybody supporting, giving money to St. Jude, Nick might not be here with us today, you know. If, if it wasn't for St. Jude and the money that everybody gives to them, it's, it's hard to say, you know. Yeah. Would, would we even have a St. Jude as, as awesome as it is, you know, right now? We, we wouldn't without everybody's support. So, yeah, with, with continued support, you know, they have successfully cured Nick. You know, he does not have cancer. Um, and, and hopefully one of these days, you know, with continued support, we will find a, you know, a complete cure for cancer. Let's, right. you know, yeah. hopefully we can figure out how to get rid of cancer or find it when it first starts and, and do something. Let's call now to become a partner in Hope. 1-800-374-4995. 1-800-374-4995.